Cool. Let's check out some Knob Creek 15. Oh. I fucking love Knob Creek, dude. Right? Oh, this looks... The color on this is just gorgeous. It's like a... It's like an orangish red. It's almost like a... Like a an ruby, ruby. Almost ruby. Like deep, rich... And you're holding it ruby. right in the light. Yeah. Like... Yeah, this mellowed up tremendously since it's been opened. It really did. Because we tried it, when we tried it, we opened it, right? No, when we tried this, it was oh, the no. day after I opened it. Still. But it's yes. actually, essentially untouched by air. A little bit of ethanol, which is a given with anything from the Ob Creek. And especially 15 years. It doesn't, really, it doesn't smell super oaky. No, it's really fruity, actually, oddly mm -hmm. enough. Like dark fruit, like that you would get like from cranberries some older, like, or like plum. Yeah, I guess some yeah, cranberry. cranberry. It's a little. It has a little bit of that like bitterness that could be cranberry. <laughs> Not too much raisin though. Raisin is a little sweeter. I would definitely say just plum and dried cranberries. Right. Yeah, I really don't get much in the realm of like. And the the ethanol cranberry. goes a little bit away. Oh yeah, it's still it's still present, but it does disappear a bit as it gets a little bit of air as we are just sitting here sniffing it repeatedly. Yeah, a little bit of berries I would say I get in this too, like just you know mixed berries. Like like, I'm, like an almost blueberry raspberry. I get I get a little more raspberry. I don't know that I get any blueberry. Yeah, it's just faint. Like, I just mean, like, if you generically mix, like, strawberries, well, I mean, raspberries, just like, blueberries. Just like, uh, yeah. Because, like, in that, in that little mumbo-jumbo, raspberry would definitely have the power. But that's, that's the idea that I'm getting. Yeah, I get you. Rich, fruity, a little bit chewy on the front end. A little bit oaky on the finish. Mm -hmm. Vanilla on the front, oak on the finish, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of cinnamon, which I think is common for pretty much anything from Knob Creek. I don't think I've had a single offering from them that didn't have a good bit of cinnamon in it. Right. Um, it does have that bit of that bean peanut funk on the very end. It does a little bit. It's more faint than it is in the other ones I've tried, mm -hmm. but it's there. It's definitely like because of the age statement. I think it's 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 started to get overpowered by other oh without a uh, doubt flavors like, compared to everything else. The older the age statement is on anything from Jim Beam, the less that um like bean peanut funk. Right. Is that's that's it. why the the little book chapter three, all the younger stuff, that tasted like a peanut shot right at the end of it. Yep. Yeah, but the, four, a, but the four with a lot of older stuff, and that was the. Mm -hmm. I might have that the other way around, but the one, the younger one was the one that was very peanutty. Yeah, there was definitely a good bit more peanut on the in that one because there was like some, like four year and six year. Right. Um, actually, no, maybe not. I don't think there was anything for weeks. I think that everything there was nine year, not three. Yeah, the one was like six, nine, ten. Like the 14. other ones were like twelve and fourteen. Yeah, that was the chapter three. Chapter four was uh, okay. So I got the backwards. Yeah, yeah, chapter four had the four year uh, rice whiskey, brown rice whiskey. Right, right, right. So yeah, that was the one with the peanut butter. All right, and then like if you take a break from sipping it for a little bit, like I get such a strong vanilla coconut cream on the aftertaste. Not even the finish, just the aftertaste. After anything else is gone. Agreed. And that is my favorite thing about this whiskey, and that's why I ended up buying two more bottles of this <laughs> just for this finish and aftertaste. Yeah, this is... Now that I'm going back and doing a little bit of bubble gum, I'm going to this one too. Like, the bubble on bubble gum. But I think that that's just something that comes with something that's heavily oaked, because I do get that on a lot of um, double barrel stuff too. Like, right. Um, Old Force from 1910, I get a shit ton of bubble gum on that. And a little right. bit on um, Woodford Double Oak. I do get it on the Woodford for sure. Uh, I got it a little bit on that Noble Oak. One of these times, when we do a Double Oak lineup, we'll have to try it. Oh, for sure. 
But this is they can get a little bit of almond in this too. A little bit of what? Almond. In the finish or in the palate? Uh, like as it's crossing over from the palate to the finish. It's almost like a roasted almond. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not like, not like the, yeah, it's, it's almost, it's, it's, it's distinctly more like a roasted almond than, than an unroasted almond. Yeah. It has so many unique little complexities to it that oh yeah, it's definitely one of those ones that if you're into Knob Creek, you have you have to have it. Oh, without a doubt. <laughs> like I don't understand why people shat on this so much. They're like, oh, it's a hundred proof and a hundred dollars for fifteen years. Like, why don't I just buy the single barrel? Right. And my thought process for that was, well, they spent their time blending this to be as complex as possible because it's a small batch. Right, and it definitely is. I mean, there's a lot of little intricacies that, even if they're they're present in some of Knob Creek stuff, but it's like mm -hmm. a little bit of, you know, like you can get a little bit of cherry and mm -hmm. I think, I want to say it was the 12-year where I got a little bit of like the fruitier. Actually, I honestly think the 12-year is like a brown sugar vanilla bomb. Like it's a ton of brown sugar, a ton of vanilla, a ton of vanilla. Yeah, I may, I may be confused. Oh, you know what? I'm thinking of the twice barrel rye. Oh, a little yeah, bit yeah, fruitier. Yeah. yeah, the twice um, barrel rye was surprisingly fruity. Like it was dry, but it was. That's where that's where the was, double oak's coming from. Yeah, I mean the. Yeah, the barrel has a lot, a lot of influence, especially given it's a rye. You're gonna, it's gonna start noticing mm -hmm. that those oaky characteristics a little bit more. But that's. Like, the strange thing about, like, how oak works, too, like, that's also why I like the 12-year better. Like, I love this Robin Bucks it is, but the 12-year I like better because I personally prefer the brown sugar and vanilla. Right. So. Right. It's one. It's good when you're in a mood for it. Yes. This is fantastic when you're in a mood for it, but. You, but, you just need to be in a mood for complexity. Yeah. And for, and for um, Fruit. a little bit drier, of a f drier, f less sweet flavors. Yes. Um. For sure. All throughout it. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, you, the, I don't think there's any aspect of it where I think that there's any real sweetness to it. Like there is at the 12. At the very end of the aftertaste, whenever you get that coconut That little cream. coconut, yeah. That's like the sweetest that I get on this. The rest of it's like, it's about as sweet. And even that, when it's an aftertaste, like, that, that shows how, how minuscule of an effect it has on the whole whiskey when it's just that little tiny bit at yep. the end that you get anything at all. Yeah. As, it, as it's lingering and going away. Yeah, this is by no means a sweet bourbon, but that, I mean that in a good way. Right, and that's also probably a part of why it gets shit on. Maybe. Because like, they're expecting it, like the 12 year was nice and sweet. A lot of brown sugar, a lot of vanilla. They're expecting more of that, and they get something completely different. That, honestly, that might be it. Like, most of the arguments that I've seen are people just being like, oh, I don't think it's worth it because of... Well, I mean, X, and, y, and, Z and you can argue that, but if you like it, it's worth it. Oh, yeah. If you like it and you're willing to pay it, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. like, I never get the argument of, oh, it's no worth blah, blah, blah amount of money. It's like, if someone's willing to pay it, it's worth it to that person. Most people think that if you go above a certain price, it needs to be barrel proof for its hot garbage. Yeah. Which I don't necessarily subscribe to because you could have even a wrinkle. People are paying $400 for the 23 year, and it's. 93 proof. Again. Yeah. Actually, all of them are except for the uh, the old rip, right? Old rip, 12 year, and I think the maybe the 10 year. Whatever the youngest pappy is, so like it's 10 years pappy. Ten year. Then yeah, there's like a 107 10 year pappy, and then like old rip 12 year is also 107. But like, yeah, I mean. Yeah, you do, it, would, would I buy this? I'm not I'm not a big enough fan to, but that's oh, me personally. Yeah, if you like Knob Creek. It's good. It's good, and if you like Knob Creek, and if you like those kinds of flavors, 100%. I would, because at that price point, there's other there's just other stuff I personally would buy for my taste. Well, if you're going to go that route, if I could get William Leroy Weller for MSRP, or like well, George no Shea for MSRP. But I'm, but I'm, but I'm talking <laughs> realistic choices. Yeah, what? Well, I like personally, if I could buy this or buy a bottle, any any batch of Booker's, I would still probably buy any batch of Booker's. That's personally. 
Just because, again, I like the barrel proof. I like that they're never the same. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, again, this is a one-time thing, at least for now. There's no telling when or if this will ever be a thing again. I think it might be a thing again. Because um, it says batch number 001 on it, so they might be doing it again, but I, don't okay. think, it, I think that that's, it's going to be less of a, uh, you know, multi-batches a year thing. That might be like a, every one week, batch, one yeah. batch a year, two, like maybe two batches a year. Or hell, maybe one batch every other year. Maybe we don't see this again this, in 2021. Yeah, because it, it, I mean, you have to think. They have to plan making this 15 years in advance plan yeah, actually right. wanting to do this and if they're thinking about you know if they want to use a particular you know if they want, um, what's the what's the uh, like a particular match a particular recipe that they want to use for to try on a 15 year that's 15 years in the making well that is the thing about um what they do with these different um like name lines if they name it something it's always the same mash bill Basically, what they do for these like fifteen, like twelve year, fifteen year things is they just they let the barrels that they want to age even longer, and then sometimes the ones that they don't want to age longer that they forget about those age longer too. Right, that's fair. And then those get thrown into the mix too. Those get which, and those usually get thrown in the mix on the cheaper stuff because it's a, if it's a nine year and they had to and they put a little bit of an old fifteen in there, it's still a nine year. Well, yeah. I mean, look at um. And they use it to dial in the taste that they want. Yeah, I mean, look at uh, Kentucky All Confiscated. They were using, like, the statement that it was a blend of, like, a six-year and a 15-year bourbon. And they it's were the 15 that they weren't, that they didn't want to use in something else. Yes, usually that's how they do it, is, like... And that's how they make their cheap blend, is they use the young stuff and the stuff that's not, that doesn't meet their standard for being on its own. Yeah, because, uh, unfortunately, people assume, like, higher age means better, which for bourbon isn't necessarily true. Right. It, it happens to be true a lot if it's a if it's a distillery that knows what they're doing. Not even that. Like they, some, a lot of times, it's just like a matter of luck. Oh, well, that's like, true too. Yeah. Like you keep tasting barrels and seeing how far they'll go, and then it's like, okay, this has reached its point. If we don't pull it now, it's gonna be shit. Right. I mean, that's why we don't see a whole lot of eighteen year Elijah Craig, like seventeen year um, evil rare, rare and shit. Because like it that. needs to be good enough to reach that point. And most of, like, for the most part, a lot of bourbons, because, like, distillers taste every single one of these barrels right. throughout the year. Right. So, if it gets to, like, 15 years, usually that's, like, the end of the lifespan, for the most part, 15 Right, the other years. times is that if, they, if it hasn't reached what they want it to, but they feel like it might and it's still improving, then that's when they keep going, that's when you get in the life of Craig 18. Yep. It's whenever there's those like special barrels that are like, oh, this is really fucking good. It can keep, it can keep going. Like this one could keep going somehow. Those are the ones that you get put that get put in those super special right. like, badges. But does that mean this? And and for all we know, Knob Creek did this because they had something like that, and that wasn't their original intent. Yeah, I mean, they I could have had one that after twelve years are like, I feel like this can still get better, and they sat and they waited, and it turned into something completely fucking different. I think what it might have been was the um, so like you know how they have those super super popular single barrel like cash drinks that they do. Um, they can range from nine years to fifteen years. Mm -hmm. I think they were seeing how popular the fifteen years were, and this was their experiment of seeing what would we what would happen if we released a small batch fifteen. Years. I, I think that might be what it's That could be true too. But and and that also sort of plays into we might not see it again because if it while we liked it, like you said, it got a lot of shit. If it got enough shit that they don't want to continue trying to do it, this could be it. It very well could be. Because the only way to tell is to wait and see if more exists. And that's why I think they released a limited batch of Knob Creek fifteen and a limited batch of Knob Creek. 12 cast screen. They wanted to see which is going to be the one that people buy, like, buy for more. And from what I understand, I haven't seen a lot of Knob Creek 12 cast screen, but every single website that you do find it on, it's sold out. So, so it could, yeah, who knows? But, yeah, I mean, if you like Knob Creek, you got a hundred bucks and you can find this. This very well could be a, a once ever thing. 
Honestly, it's complex enough. Like, if you prefer, like, if you like fruity, complex bourbons, this is one of the best ones I've had for sure. Right. If you if you're not fan of Bob Creek and you love, because I was gonna say it still has its own little twist. It still has a little peanut funk at the end. Oh, without a doubt. And this is under this is undeniably Bob Creek. Right. Like you taste it, you know it's a Bob Creek, but. It is very different from the 9 year and it's very different from the 12 year. Like, if you expected a stronger version of the 12 year, this is going in a completely different direction and this is not what you're expecting. Because right. I'll point blank say, I like the 12 year better and it's cheaper. Right. But this is delicious. Like, I, oh, I, I, can, I can find myself sipping on this pretty often. Without a doubt. Yeah. Cheers to that.